Only Alfred has a day for it. Maharaja. World order. Thank you for being. Hey everybody, Goldie here with my very first character spotlight series. This character series is going to be on Fandango, or Fandango, however you'd like to pronounce it. I've got at least six videos planned for this series. This first video uh, showing the basics on how his moves work in a tag setting. And I'm also going to do a demonstration match just to kind of show you how the moves flow and how to use him for winning tag matches as the lead off without tagging in your partner. Let's take a look at the basic setup for him. So it's the yellow two move, the tag move, and double purple. So the move that generates protect gems and the move that generates the two by three area of yellow gems. Taking a look at the trainers and coaches, the only required trainer for this build is a cam at 5K. Your second trainer depends on who your tag partner is. You could use Trickster Big Show for more purple move damage. Harlem Heat Booker T generates more protect gems. Dusty Rhodes generates more protect gems. Uh, if you have Piper, he boosts all move damage. We'll get into which trainers benefit your tag partner in later videos. Coaching options. Bailey is a good one. Everyone should have her. Uh, she gives that extra protect gem. If you have Earthquake, if you got him in the Chase MLC, he's another Protect Gem coach. If you got the Gobbledygooker, that would be a good coach as well as they boost all move damage. For the purposes of this video, I'm going to be using Fandango to win. So I'm going to use Harlem Heat Booker T for more Protect Gems. And I've put Master of the Universe Cena up as well just to get a little more protection from the red gems. So going into the match, my Fandango is only 4-star bronze, so we're going to go up against a 4-star bronze Cesaro. My tag partner doesn't matter right now. I'm going to use a jobber with no links uh, just to get the most XP possible and to show you what Fandango can do. All right, because the knife edge chop is a 5 MP move, even if you don't have tour perks, it will be ready on turn one with a cam training. This move is only effective when you have a tag counter to reduce, which is why it doesn't work in solo matches. And this is why you don't want to generate a pin using the second purple move on turn one. So you reduce your tag counter by two and it'll fill both of your purple moves. In this instance, we're using Fandango to win the match. So we're going to lay these protect gems. I probably shouldn't lay them here on this bottom row with the match three blue, but it's just for informational purposes. Ideally, you don't want to place them where the opponent could break them, and you don't want to place them where you're going to cover it up with yellow gems. At three star gold, the reverse swinging STO turns from a two by two to a two by three area of yellow gems generates six gems, and since your yellow two move is a five MP, it'll automatically refill that. Try not to place the gems where you're gonna create a wild card or a cascade. You're trying to avoid pinning your opponent on turn one. So we've refilled the knife edge chop, and since our tag counter is at one, this move will still work. So use this move again to refill both of your purple moves because you gain eight purple MP. If your tag counter was at zero and you accidentally hit that move, you would still do the move damage, but you wouldn't get the effect of gaining the purple MP because there's no tag counter to reduce to make that possible. And since we're using Fandango to win the match, I've laid the protect gems a second time. And now I'm going to use the reverse swinging STO to lay this area of yellow gems, try to get a bit of a cascade and pin the opponent. 16 protect gems at almost 2,500 damage blocked means that Fandango is blocking close to 40,000 damage and the opponent has to beat that just to bypass the protect gems and then do even more damage to try to kick out. So with this, you get your move cycle off twice, you take zero damage and you win the match. 
Obviously not every single match is going to go this way. If by chance you happen to get pinned by the opponent but your yellow move is charged, use your tag partner to kick out and use the yellow move to start cycling your moves over again. As you can see, I have an epic belt on my Fandango. It's only half unlocked, so I have the 20% armor set bonus. With the recent change in move damage medals, Fandango would benefit from a purple move damage flat medal. If you take a look at the medal I have on Kalisto, it's a tier four green move damage flat medal, and that caps at 50,000. So if you put a purple tier four on Fandango, it means his purple moves will do 64,000 and 63,000 damage respectively. This will allow you to farm harder matches, do more damage, and get more XP from tougher opponents. If you're planning to use Fandango for offense and you have an epic or legendary belt, you may want to consider doing a 20-20 split between Armor and Fury. That way he still plays offensively while using the Protect Gems. This concludes the first Character Spotlight series video on Fandango. I've got at least five more videos planned, including tag partners that use Protect Gems, self-healers, farming, botch gem users, and mixed match tag matches. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, share this with your friends. You'll want to make sure you are a subscriber if you're not already to see when the next couple episodes of this character series come out. Thank you all again and be well. Do <laughs> <laughs>